hey, are you looking to know how to configure OpenVPN servers in our products? Please don't hesitate, as in this video, we're going to go through every step of this configuration so you can do it next. Greetings and thank you for watching this new video tutorial. If you are the person that you are looking to access to your network from a remote location using your devices, this is the video for you. Just for me to give a little bit of context here, commercial VPNs as we commonly know them are often used in order to change, for example, the public IP address that the ISP provides or to change the geographic location where we are or provide an additional layer of security in order to be more protected while browsing the internet. However, its main goal is to reach remote subnets by using Python. That's why in this video, we're going to explain how to configure specifically OpenVPN servers in order to reach local networks from remote locations. This applies to laptops, routers, phones, smartphones, etc. So in order to do this, we can configure any of our GWN routers. But in this case, we're going to configure the GWN 7062. First, we have to ensure that our OpenVPN service is reachable from the outside. This by having a public IP address in the one interface, configure a domain name, or configure a port forward in case you have a router in front. In this case, I have a public IP address in the one interface. Even though there are other VPN options from the GWN router, for the purposes of this video, we will only use the OpenVPN server, from which we will be providing service by activating the OpenVPN service option. We have to configure a name for our server. In server mode, we have to configure the method by which our clients will authenticate to the network, SSL being the authentication method using the SSL certificates only. User authentication is the way our users will have to log in with a unique username and password. SSL plus user authentication is a combination of the above. And PSK is a unique password to establish the connection. The protocol can be TCP or UDP. By default, it is set to UDP. We have to use only one interface per server. In the destination option, we must select the interfaces that our new VPN server will be able to reach. In this case, I will select default LAN so the VPN server will be able to communicate with the local network and the GWN router. The local port option configures the port where our OpenVPN server will be available from our one interface. The encryption algorithm will be the method of how we will encrypt our data through the VPN connection. And the IS algorithm will be the type of authentication for incoming traffic. We can select any option from this list, but for the purposes of this practice, we will only use the default settings. If we need to secure the authentication method, we could use the TLS key which must be used by clients in order to connect to the OpenVPN server. Otherwise, the connection will be automatically rejected. The option Allow Duplicate Client Certificates will allow all users to use the same set of certificates multiple times. Now, our GWN7062 is capable to create its own SSL TLS self-signed certificate. We have to configure a CA certificate, a server certificate, and a client certificate in order to complete this configuration. Simple, we choose to add a new CA certificate by clicking on the drop-down list. We have to configure a name for the CA certificate, then the key length of the certificate. The higher this value is, the higher the key content is. We have to make sure that this value is constant in all the certificates and keys that we will create. In this case, we will configure this at 2048. The Digest algorithm is an authentication protocol that will be used before the negotiation. We will modify this to SHADE 256 as recommendation. The expiration option is the number of valid days since the creation of the certificate that will be valid. Then we have to configure the information of origin of the certificate. When creating our SIN certificate, we have to proceed to add a server certificate. To do this, we must fill the data in a similar way as we did with the CS certificate, thus associating it with the CS certificate previously configured. The Digest algorithm will be SHADE256, and the information of origin will be the same we configure in the CI certificate. Now, in OpenVPN servers, we must create a tunnel network which our clients will connect to in order to use the IP address in browse that the servers will grant to reach remote networks. An OpenVPN client will receive an IP address from this tunnel network when the connection has been successfully established. It is very important to differentiate each of these networks. The tunnel network must not coincide with any client network. Therefore, it is advisable to set up a complex tunnel network. The Reddit Gateway option allows clients to use this OpenVPN connection as an IP gateway. This way, we will have internet access to the VPN network and not the ISP, similarly as public VPN services do by masquerading the public IP address. Next is the push routes option, which allow us to configure what are going to be the LAN subnets that our router will offer in the VPN connection. It is important to configure here the LAN subnets of the router. The LCO compression is a setting that helps to compress the data between the user and the client. In this case, we are going to keep it enabled. 
And the last option is allow peer to change IP, which helps to maintain the connection between the client and the server, even though the client has changed its IP address. With these settings, we have configured our OpenVPN server in a basic way. Please make sure that the LAN subnet is configured to send traffic to the OpenVPN server, otherwise it won't work. Now, we have to create the certificate for users in order to connect to our OpenVPN server. For that, we have to go to Certificate Management and then add the user. Full name is the description name of the user. Then we have to configure a username and a password. If you're looking to configure a side-to-side -side user, we will have to specify the subnet first. So let's go to a secondary router that I have here, the GWN 7052, and let's find out what the LAN subnet is. As you can see, it's a different subnet. It's the 10.0.20.0.24. Let's click back and add the side-to-side -side user. In this case, I will configure the full name side-to-side. -side. Username will be 7052, and I will configure a password. We have to specify the OpenVPN subnet, which will be 10.0.20.0/24, and we add the user. Now, let's go to certificates and add some. Here, we have to create a client certificate. We configure a name for the certificate. We have to bind this certificate to the CA certificate previously configured, we change the certificate type from server to client, we select the client user we need, and the rest of settings will have to be configured the same way as the previous certificates we did. Now that we have our certificates configured, let's go ahead and download them. We need the client certificate, the client key, and the CA certificate. So in order to connect to our OpenVPN server from a Windows computer, we will have to configure first an OVPN file. The OPPN template can be downloaded from our tools page. In case you need the link, it is in the description. We go ahead and download the template. And once opened, we have to configure our OPPN file. For that, I will go ahead and open the certificates in the notepad. We start first with the CA certificate, then the client key, and the client certificate. The role of the OPPN file is the client role. Kindly be noted that semicolons and pounds are considered comments. So anything that is next to that symbol won't be considered. In this case, as our OpenVPN server is configured for user authentication, we have to uncomment the out user pass line. Our OpenVPN server uses the UDP protocol, so let's leave it as it is. The remote line is the IP address of the server, so we have to configure here the public IP address that the router has. In this case, I have it already. Now we can specify where the certificates are if we configure a folder in the computer but I personally like the angle bracket format because the certificate will be in the file and doesn't have to be saved in the computer. That's why I decided to comment the first method and uncomment the brackets method. Please make sure it's configured like this. Now, we have to copy the content of the certificates. Let's make sure you copy from begin certificate to end certificate. We have to repeat this process for the other two keys, client certificate and client key. In case you configure the TLS authentication, you can specify where the key is or use the brackets too. We have to specify the cipher option and the digest algorithm. Now that we have our OPPN file configured, let's go ahead and download an OpenVPN client in order for us to connect to our OpenVPN server. In this case, we're going to use the OpenVPN Connect for Windows. You will find the URL in the description. The application looks similar to this. In this case, we're going to upload an OPPN file. The application will ask for username and password because of the out user pass line. Before we connect, I will do a continuous ping in order to confirm connectivity with the router. As you can see, it is failing because we haven't connected yet. Now that we are connected, pings are reachable. If we decide to disconnect, pings are not. Or let's see how it works in a phone. In this case, I have a GRP2604P, which I'm going to upload the OVPN file to. And we have to configure the username and password. Once configured, we have to save and apply. And let's see how the VPN connection got established. And we receive an IP address from the toilet network. This means that we are connected. The same way we did with the OpenVPN Connect client for Windows, there is an Android version that we will use in order to connect from a smartphone. The process is the same as the Windows client version. We just need to upload the file. You will find the link in the description for download purposes. And at last, we're going to configure a side-to-side -side client in order to connect two different subnets. For that, we have to add a VPN client specifically for OpenVPN. We configure a name, 
and we have to make sure that the settings that are here match with the ones that are configured in the OpenVPN server. In this case, the transfer protocol has to be UDP, we have to select the destination going to the default LAN. The remote OpenVPN server will be the public IP address of the router that hosts the OpenVPN server. The authentication mode is SSL plus user authentication. And remember that we created a site-to-site -site user where we configure the remote subnet in there. That has to be set in the VPN client. The encryption algorithm and BIOS algorithm will be the same. Then there is the route setting, which is different from the push route setting from the server. This setting helps the clients to reach subnets that are reachable by the OpenVPN server. But as the OpenVPN server pushes its own subnet, we don't need it. As the OpenVPN server has the LCO compression enabled, we have to make sure that the OpenVPN client has it as well. Then we upload the certificates and the key, and we save the configuration. And then it's just about time for them to connect and establish the site-to-site -site OpenVPN. Remember that after this configuration, it's important to configure in the LAN subnet the destination that goes to the OpenVPN client. Otherwise, the LAN subnet won't have connectivity with the OpenVPN. And this was all for today's video tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in our comment section. Bye-bye.